by the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. Entering formulas and predicting future costs. First, we will learn how to enter text and numbers. Text can be entered directly into the cell and then formatted in a variety of ways. Each cell in an Excel worksheet can be thought of as a miniature word process. To enter a text, we should first select the cell where you want the text to appear and then begin typing. It is more simple. Excel is smart enough to know the difference between numbers and text. So there are no extra steps for entering numbers. Let us try the following example of entering numbers and text into the worksheet. You should open your new Excel worksheet. Then select cell A1 and type Microsoft Corporation Sales. In cell A2, type millions of dollars. Select A3 and type 2011 to 2016. You should notice that the entire in cell A3 will be treated as text by Excel because of the spaces and letters included. And then go to cell A4 to F4 to enter the years. In cell A4, type 2016 and type 2015 in cell B4. Then select A4 and B4 and move the mouse pointer over the lower right corner of the selection. The mouse pointer will now change to a skinny cross indicating that you can use the autofill feature. Click and drag the mouse to the right to fill in the remaining years. <coughs> Notice that the mouse recent data is entered at the left and the most distant data at the right. So we need to format this Excel screen. Formatting and alignment options. The worksheet in last slide isn't very attractive. Note that the text is displayed as the left side of the cell, while the numbers are displayed as the right side. By default, this is the way that Excel aligns text and numbers. However, we can easily change the way that this entries are displayed through the use of the formatting and alignment options. Before continuing, we should define few terms, such as a typeface. The term typeface is a particular style of drawing letters and numbers. However, the text that you are expected to enter into your worksheet is displayed in Time New Roman or whatever the typeface you want. Typeface also refers to whether the text is drawn in bold italic or perhaps bold italic. Also, we have the term type size. The term type size refers to the size of the typeface. We normally refer to the type size in points. 
a typeface printed at a 12 point size is larger than the typeface which is printed at a 10 point size. We also refer to the typeface and type size combination as a font. So when we say change the font to 12 point bold time new Roman, it is understood that we are referring to a particular typeface, time new Roman, bolded and type size 12 points. Also, we have the term format, which refers to the typeface, size, text color, and cell alignment used to display the, the text. When we wanted to change the font of the text that was entered to Time New Roman 12 points and bold, we should First, select the range of cell and from the home tab, click on the font list to have the font choices and select time new romans from this list. Then, click the bold button and choose also 12 from the font size list. Notice that as you scroll through the font and size list, the selected text is displayed as will look on the worksheet. This is known as live preview and it works for many but not all of the worksheet. And also of the formatting feature in Excel 2016. Because none of these changes actually take effect until you validate them by clicking by your mouse or keyboard arrows, you can scroll through the choices until the text looks exactly right as you want. You can also make these changes by right-clicking the selected cells and choosing Format Cells from the menu. The choices that we made can be found on the font tab. We can just as easily change the font for numbers. Suppose that we want to change the years in cell from A4 to F4 to 12 point italic time new Roman. First, we should select the range of cells from A4 to F4, then select the proper attributes from the home tab or right click and choose format cell. Notice that this change could also have been made at the same time as the text was changed or you could now press Ctrl plus Y to repeat the last action. You could also add the repeat button to the quick access toolbar by clicking a row at the right of the quick access toolbar and choose more commands. Then select the repeat button and click the add button in the dialog box. Our worksheet is now beginning to take on a nicer look, but it still isn't quite right. We are used to seeing titles 
necessarily centered over the table but our title is way over at the left we can remedy this by using excel's alignment option We have set up the heading for our first worksheet. Now let us add Microsoft sales in millions of dollars for the years from 2011 and until 2016 into the sales from B5 to G5 as shown in this screen. Then we add the data of net income for the year from 2011 to 2016 in this worksheet from sales from B6 to G6 we have immediately below the sales data and apply the same formatting we can now proceed with our profitability analysis because of the change in sales over the years, is it isn't immediately clear from the data whether the company, which is the Microsoft's profitability, has improved or not. As net income has varied as well. In this type of situation, it is often preferable to look at net income as a percentage of sales instead of dollar net income so we don't have to type in more data to do this instead but we need to let excel calculate this percentage of us all we need to do is to enter the formula formulas in excel are based on cell addresses to add two cells together we simply tell Excel to take the contents of the first cell and add it to the contents of the second cell. The result of the formula will be placed in the cell itself in which the formula is entered. In our problem, we need to find net income as a percentage of sales. We will do this first for 2016. Before entering our first formula, we should insert a label identifying the data. In cell A7, we type net profit margin. Change the active cell to B7, where we want to place the result of our calculation. The problem that we want to solve is to take the number in cell B6 which refers to net income and divide it by the number in B5 which refers to sales. In Excel, division is represented by the forward slash. So in B7 type the f this formula equal B6 divided by B5. The equal sign must precede all formulas in Excel. Otherwise, it will treat the formula as text and will not calculate the result. Press the Enter key to calculate the result of the formula. You should get the result as 0.1969 as this result for the year 2016. In our example, we type the formula directly into the cell because the small size of our worksheet made it easy to know what cells we wanted to use in the formula. In many instances, this is not the case, but in more complicated worksheets, it is usually easier to use pointer mode to enter formulas. In pointer mode, we use the mouse to point to the cell 
that we want to be included in the formula and Excel insert them into the formula then move to cell C7 and we will enter the formula using pointer mode first you should type the equal sign to place Excel in edit mode or you can type C6 by clicking on the cell C6 with your mouse you should notice that the cell C6 appears in the formula bar to the right of the equal sign then press the forward slash key to indicate the division and then click on cell C5 by the mouse in the formula bar you should see this formula equal C6 divided by C5 then press the enter key to calculate the result of the formula the result for year 2015 is 0.1303 let us change the format of these cells so that they are easier to read in this case it would be nice to see them in percentage format with two decimal places first you should highlight the cells from B7 until C7 and right click by mouse then choose format cells from the menu and click on the number tab on the format cells dialog box from the category list click on percentage and then set the decimal places to 2 press the enter key or click the OK button you should also apply this format by using the percent style button on the ribbon of your screen to get to decimal places you would then need to click the increase decimal button in the same group then we want to copying and moving this formula to years from 2014 until 2011 we have now calculated the net profit margin for 2016 and 2015 but that still leaves four years for which we need to enter formulas which are 2014 2013 2012 and 2011 we can copy this formula and Excel will update the cell references and change the cell addresses to maintain the same relative relationships for example when we enter in cell <coughs> sorry, D7 for year 2014 the formula will be read as equal d6 divided by d5 and if we copy the formula from c7 to d7 Excel will change the formula from c6 divided by c5 equal c6 divided by c5 to be equal c d6 divided by d5 automatically this works because Excel treats all cell references as a relative cell. When you type the formula in cell B7, which is equal B6 divided by B5, Excel reads that as take the contents of the cell that is one row above the current cell and divide that by contents of the cell that is two rows above the current cell when copying formulas excel maintains the same relative cell relationships to that the formulas are updated 
When we copy to the left or right, Excel updates the columns in the formula. So, so when we copy up or down, Excel changes the rules. To change this behavior, we use absolute references instead by using the dollar sign as we mentioned in last lecture. An absolute reference always refers to the same cell. No matter where you copy it, to create an absolute reference, type dollar signs before the column letter and row number. For example, dollar B dollar six will always refer to cell B six. The dollar sign tells Excel to not change the reference. We can also create mixed reference. In a mixed reference, only the column or row remains constant, not both. I mean, either the column or the row which is remains constant. For example, dollar $B6 is a mixed reference, which includes column absolute but row relative. If this formula is copied down, it will change to B7. It will be dollar $B7. But if it is copied across it, it will still be dollar $B6. On the other hand, B$6, it means cumulative relative. And that column is relative and row is absolute. Will still be as B$6 if copied down, but will it change it to C$6 if copied across. We will make heavy up by using of absolute and mixed references in later chapters. Note that you can use the key F4 to cycle through every possible reference type. Rather than retyping the formula for our other cells, let us simply copy from C7 by the following stages. First, you should select the cell C7 and then click the copy button on the ribbon. Then highlight cells G7 until G7 and click the paste button. Excel provides for seven different horizontal alignments within a cell. We can have the text or numbers aligned with the left or right sides of the cell or centered within the cell boundaries. Excel also allows centering the text across a range of cells. Let us change the alignment of our year numbers first. Highlight cells from A4 to F4 and then click the center button in the alignment section of the home tab. Notice that the numbers are all centered within their respective cells. We will also center our, our table title across the whole range of numbers that we have entered. To do this, we should select the entire range across which we want to center our titles. Highlight cells from A1 to F3 and select format cells from the right click menu. Click on the Alignment tab and then select Center across selection from the Horizontal Alignment list. Then click on the OK button. You can notice that 
the titles are centered across column from A to F. Also, there is a button on the home tab that will merge and center the selected cells. This button will have the appearance of do, doing the same thing as center across selection, but it doesn't. In addition to centering the text, it also merges all of the selected cells into one big cell that spans multiple columns and rows. In this process of merging the cells, all data that isn't in the upper left cell will be lost. Furthermore, merged cells make it difficult to select, sort, or filter a range. There is also, if needed, on merge cells command in the same button. Formatting numbers. Besides changing the typeface and type size when dealing with the numbers, we can also change their appearance by adding commas and dollar signs and also by altering the number of decimal places displayed. Furthermore, we can make the numbers appear differently depending on whether they are positive or negative. How? For example, we might want negative numbers to be red in color and split in two brackets rather than using the negative sign. You can also design custom number formats, but for now we will stick to the more common predefined formats. We should select the range of cells which include numbers and choose Format Cells from the right click menu and then click on the Number tab. You are presented with the Number Format dialog box that contains a list of formatting categories such as number, currency, accounting, date, time, and so on, as shown in this screen. Now, select number from the category list on the left side of Format Sales dialog box. This will give you the option to choose the number of decimal places displayed choose whether or not to use 1000 separator and also select the format of negative numbers. We want to display the sales numbers with commas separating every third digit and two decimal places. So change the decimal places to two, two decimal places and check the box to add a 1000 separator. Then click the OK button and note that the numbers are displayed in a more readable format. You could accomplish almost exactly the same format by clicking the comma style button on the ribbon. Also, we want to add borders 
and shading for the selected cells. This text formatting isn't the only design element available in your Excel, but you can also live in up worksheet by placing borders around cells and shading them in your worksheet. Select this range of cells A1 until F A4 until F4. I mean the months and click right clicking the selection and choose format cell then select the border tab from the dialog box there are 13 different line styles that can be applied and you can change the color of the line Click on the thick solid line and then click on both of the top and the bottom lines in the same view. Click the OK button to see these changes. Also, when you select cells from A4 to F4, we will add shading. By choose format cells from the menu, but at this time you should select the fill tab, not number tab, but the fill tab. This tab allows you to set the background color and pattern of the cells selected. Click on a light gray color and then press the OK button. Now to make the numbers more readable, make them bold to be more readable. Entering formulas. So far we haven't done anything that couldn't just as easily be done in a table. But the real power of your spreadsheets become obvious when formulas are used. Formulas will enable us to convert the data that we have entered into useful information. All formulas must begin with an equal sign. We also use numbers in formulas unless they will never change. Numbers that may change should be in a cell in the assumption area in the below of your Excel sheet. Also, we can copy and paste formulas. But when we copy it will change the cell reference unless we put the dollar sign before the formula and the name of the cell. This is called absolute reference. When we move from one cell to another by the formula it will keep existing reference. Also, we have mathematical operators, which are similar to a calculator, such as the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, which are basic arithmetic operators. Also, we have exponentiation operator to raise a number to a power. But to order these operations, we use parentheses to indicate which parts of a formula should be calculated first.
we have an example on predicting future costs based on past experience certain expenses or costs tend to be constant over time while others vary from months to another or, or from one period to another This explains that their month operating expenses seem to vary according to how many days the store is open in this example. And also, she asks you whether it still can help predict the cost based on this previous cost behavior. We have two basic, two basic methods to predict costs the high low method and the least square method the high low method is the easiest method but the least square method is more accurate while the least square method is more complicated this example using the following available data calculate total cost when 20 days open we have months days open and expenses we should know that the difference in cost between months must be attributed to a change in variable cost so we will use the maximum and the minimum built-in function in Excel 2016 to determine the high and low day open and from them, from them determine the high and low cost. The variable cost can be the variable cost per unit can be calculated by dividing the difference in the high and low costs by the difference in the high and low days of it. But the fixed costs can be calculated by subtracting variable costs from total costs. Now, you should open your Excel worksheet and type months in cell C1. Type days open in cell D1. Expense in cell E1. Then you go to cell C2 and write January then write February in cell C3 and use the autofill feature to fill in the remaining months from March to December enter your example days open in column D from cell D2 to cell D13 then enter the company expense in column E from cell E2 to cell E13. In cell A15, type high days and expense. Then in cell A16, type low days and expense. You should notice that the high low method should determine the high and low according to the levels of production not according to the cost so we should go to cell d15 and enter the formula equal max d2 to d13 then Click on Enter button. In cell D16, 
enter the formula equal minimum d2 to d13 and click on enter after that you should take the high and low days open there and take their expense the high days open is 26 which have the high expense 6100 but the low days open is 16 days which has 3,800 dollar for expense we now want to determine the difference between high and low costs and high and low quantities or number of days open so we will go to cell A17 and type the difference in cell D17 enter the formula equal D15 minus D16 in cell E17 enter the formula equal E15 minus, D, minus E16 then we want to calculate variable cost per day open go to cell a19 and type variable cost per day open and in cell c19 we should enter the formula equal e17 divided by d17 which have the difference in cost divided by the difference in days open in cell a20 type fixed cost and in C20 enter the formula equal E15 minus between two brackets C19 multiplied by D15 to calculate the fixed cost then go to the cell A21 and type prediction of expense then type 20 in cell D21 to predict the expense if the company have 20 days open. In cell E21, we should enter the formula equal D21 multiplied by C19 between two brackets plus C20 to determine the production of expense as we multiply the variable cost per day open by the number of days plus the fixed cost the prediction of expense is four thousand seven hundred twenty dollar We can also using Excel built-in functions which have about 500 built-in functions. We can also use the insert function dialog box by pressing the F of X button on the formula bar to launch the insert function dialog box. In Excel 2016, we also have dot functions. Dot functions, which most new function introduced in Excel 2010 or later, have a dot in the name of these functions. We also using the user defined functions user defined functions are functions that are written 
in the visual basic for applications programming language. How can we quick Excel? There is a difference between closing a workbook and quieting the Excel application. Close a workbook by choosing file, then close, or by pressing the X in the upper right corner of the application. This will close the application if one workbook is open. Otherwise, it will only close the workbook. Exit the Excel application by closing all workbooks and then clicking the X in the upper right corner of the application. We have best practices for spreadsheet models. There are some ideas to keep in mind when designing spreadsheets. First, keep inputs and calculations separate. Second, never enter numbers into formulas if those numbers may change or use cell reference instead them. Third, your model should be well recognized and neatly formatted. Fourth, document your formulas using cell comments or text boxes. Fifth and finally, test your model thoroughly, even using unexpected values for input. Thank you, my dear students.